If you've ever wondered why customers and clients seem excited to buy from you, but then back out at the last minute, then this is for you. You see, the reason that your sales, your marketing, and your advertising tactics aren't working as well as you want right now is because they're triggering something called reactance in your customers and clients. Reactance occurs anytime someone feels even the slightest bit of pressure or like they're being told what to do or what's best for them, which is pretty much exactly what happens in every single sales situation ever. Online, offline, in person, doesn't matter. And the result is the client or customer freezing, putting up their guard and looking for excuses to back out as quickly as possible. But the good news is there's a very simple way that you can overcome this. A way that's been proven in countless studies to double the rate of compliance to a request. Or in other words, if you ask 10 people to do something or to buy something, instead of just four people out of 10 agreeing or saying yes, well, after you learn this phrase, you'll be able to double that from four out of 10 to eight out of 10. And all you needed to do was say the four little words, but you are free. When used correctly, like I'm going to show you how to do here, these four little words immediately lower someone's guard, make them more open and receptive to your request, and help to make you look more caring and empathetic and respectful. So let me show you how it's done and walk you through exactly how to use this little phrase, but you are free in the absolute best way possible. But before we get into how to use this phrase correctly, as well as some important tips and strategies to help make it that much more effective, first, a quick message from this video's sponsor, Metricool. Metricool has quickly become become my number one secret weapon when it comes to creating better and more effective social media marketing campaigns by allowing me to take care of everything all in one place. It integrates with Facebook and Instagram, and Twitter, and TikTok and LinkedIn and YouTube and more. And planning and creating content with Metricool saves me around two to three hours every single week. Where things get really interesting though is what happens after you post your content. And this is what really separates the amateur marketers from the pros. And that's all about analytics and using data to help make informed and strategic social media decisions decisions. Using the Metricool analytics, you can analyze, manage, measure, and see everything in one place. By tracking the metrics that actually matter, you can see how your website, your social networks, and your online ads are improving and evolving. So make sure to check out Metricool by clicking the link in the description below this video. And when you use the code ADAM, you can try any paid plan for 30 days for completely free. Okay, now let's dive into the heart of the BYAF technique. The But You Are Free technique was introduced not that long ago in the year 2000 by two researchers named Gagain and Pascal. What they found is that when subjects just walking down the street were randomly asked to give money to a charitable cause, only 10% complied. However, when the phrase, but you are free to accept or refuse was added to the end, the number of people who said yes and agreed to give money went up to 47.5%. As anyone in sales and marketing, business, even just life can appreciate, going from 10% to 47.5% is an amazing achievement. And it costs nothing, nada. Zilch. Zero. And this study has been replicated dozens and dozens of different times across the world in all kinds of different situations and scenarios, and the result is always some kind of tangible improvement. So the big question I had then is why don't more people know about this and why isn't everybody using it? So to answer that question, we need to take a look at what I call the biggest myth in business. When it comes to starting and scaling a business, there's a lot of bad advice out there that's still getting tossed around and pushed onto unsuspecting victims. And one of the worst offenders by far is that if you wanna make sales, you need to use those time-tested sales techniques like ABC, always be closing. Do whatever you can to make the sale. Overpromise and oversell. Use high pressure tactics. Push your prospect as much and as fast as possible. Time is money, baby. Ugh. Gross. Traditional pushy sales and marketing tactics also create a tremendous amount of distrust with the client who hates being sold to even though they do like to buy. It's a weird situation. So naturally they question the motives of the salesperson, which leads to even greater scrutiny of pretty much everything they're saying. They have less acceptance of what's being said and what's being offered. And all of that leads to a complete loss of inertia where the client or the customer just stays put, doesn't do anything. The antidote or solution to this is BYAF, but you are free and they're incredibly important. So let's talk about them now. The reason that the but you are free technique works so well is that it acts in complete opposite to all of the gross and pushy and outdated sales techniques I just listed. In other words, BYAF works because it allows your prospects to pursue freedom by not limiting their power, trying to overly control the situation. It also doesn't threaten their right to choose, but instead empowers them with that decision and gives them a feeling of control over the situation. And it gives them options, yes? or no. And while technically they always had the option to just say no and walk away, by giving them the opportunity to decline your offer, it actually reduces the risk that they will. 
It's almost like a kind of reverse psychology where you're showing a certain level of disinterest in their decision. And this is powerful because it shows that you're confident in your business or your offer, whatever it is that you're selling. You've got something good. It's up to them whether they want it or not. But if you really want to add gas to the fire and make offers that are practically impossible to resist, then this next tip is the key. Here's how it works. In the late 1970s, Ellen Langer at Harvard University published what's since become known as the copy machine study. Here's how it went down. A researcher would be seated at the library waiting for someone to go over and use the photocopy machine. As soon as they saw someone, the researcher would get up, walk over to them, and ask them one of three different questions. Version one was a request only, and it went like this. Excuse me, I have five pages. May I use the Xerox machine? Version two was a request, but with a valid reason added to the end. And it went like this. Excuse me, I have five pages. May I use the Xerox machine? Because I'm in a rush. And version three was a request, but with a fake or useless or kind of irrelevant reason added on the end. And it went like this. Excuse me, I have five pages. May I use the Xerox machine? Because I have to make copies. What's interesting is that with version one, where no reason was given, around 60% of people allowed the researcher to cut in front. But when a valid reason was added to the request, compliance went from 60% up to 94%. But here's where things get really interesting. If providing no reason to your request gets you around a 60% compliance rate and providing a valid reason gets you a 94% compliance rate, then what do you think the compliance rate number is gonna be for providing a fake or useless or completely irrelevant reason? Feel free to pause the video and put your best guess in the comments below. I'll give you three seconds now to hit the pause button, then we'll get back to it. Well, what they found is that when providing a fake reason or a useless or irrelevant reason, like in this case, may I use the copy machine because I have to make copies? Well, it delivered a staggering 93% compliance rate, a mere 1% less than providing an actual valid reason. The takeaway point here is that in order to increase the likelihood of somebody complying with one of your requests or taking you up on your offer, all you have to do is give them a reason. Like, any reason. Which is similar to how the BYAF technique works, by giving them control and allowing them to make their own decision and feel justified in their choice afterwards. So to upgrade both BYAF and the copy machine study all at the same time, all you need to do is follow these three steps. Number one, make your request. Number two, provide a reason. And number three, finish with BYAF. But to help make this even more actionable and concrete, let me give you some examples of what this might look like in the real world. First, now that you know about BYAF, it's gonna be funny for you to start watching this going on in your everyday life, happening all around you, both when you make requests as well as when other people make requests to you. With that said, it's important to note here that most people are not trying to manipulate you. They probably don't even know what they're doing and have never even heard of BYAF. This is because adding something like, but you are free naturally to the end of a request is just something that we as people do when we don't wanna put someone on the spot or make them feel awkward. So now here's some examples of what this might look like in real life. For the sake of this exercise, we're gonna use the activity or the request as asking you to hit the like button. But of course, feel free to swap that out with whatever request or offer that you're going to be making to your prospects. Let's begin, shall we? Would you be able to do me a favor and hit the like button? You're free to say no. Sorry to bother you, but would you mind quickly hitting the like button? You're totally free to not do so. You seem like the perfect kind of person that would wanna go down and just smash the like button. But of course, it's your call. And there are a ton of other variations that you can use as well, including you decide, it's not up to me. You know yourself better than anyone, so you decide. Hey, no pressure either way. If you can't help, I completely understand, but I just thought I'd ask anyway. And while all of this is great, if you want to discover even more powerful psychological principles, then the next thing you're going to want to do is check out the video that I've got linked up right here, because I think you're really going to enjoy it. Or don't check it out, it's up to you. And why people like what they like, hate what they hate, do what they do and think what they think, the better you're going to be able to create effective, profitable, and business-growing marketing strategies. 